It's time for a wellness time revolution. For a wellness revolution. Brought to you by Hotsi Health and Wellness Center. Honest discussion on maintaining health and wellness naturally to enjoy a better quality of life. He's the doctor fighting to let you keep your doctor. Now, Dr. Stephen Hotsi. Dr. Hotsi's Wellness Revolution podcast is brought to you by Physicians Preference Pharmacy, formerly Hotsi Pharmacy. Welcome to Dr. Hotsi's Wellness Revolution. I'm Stacey Banfield here with Dr. Stephen Hotsi, founder of the Hotsi Health and Wellness Center. And if you've not had a chance to download our podcast, then please feel free to go to hotzepodcast.com. That's H-O-T-Z-E podcast.com for all of the ways that you can achieve health and wellness naturally. Well, today we have such an exciting guest. A lot of people are very familiar with her. She is a famous author, a quite a prolific author. Dr. Hussey's so excited that you're going to be able to interview her today. Why don't you share with the audience who our guest is going to be? Well, for all of you who particularly, uh, particularly Christian women, mm -hmm. uh, will know this woman very well. It's Stormy Omardian from Franklin, Tennessee. She is a world-renowned Christian author who has written well over 50 books. That's five mm. zero books. Wow. And most of those have been written in the last 12 or 13 years. And she's most famous for her books that are entitled The Power of, uh, the power of Prayer the, of a Praying Wife, the power, of a pair of a, the power of a Praying Husband, the power of praying for your uh, for your adult children, the power of of a praying teenager, the power of prayer, and all these different aspects of lives. And I think she's got somewhere in the neighborhood twenty or thirty books entitled "The Power of a Praying." And then we have an addition to that. So the book, "The Power of a Praying Wife," the latest I've seen, it's sold over eight million copies worldwide it may be more than that how many is it sold amazing. now amazing it's sold about um nine or ten million nine or um, ten million the power of yeah. a praying wife and i'm going to buy that that book not only for my wife because i would love her to pray for me in the way that you encourage but i'm going to give it to my five daughters as well so they can pray for their husbands and i'm going to give it to oh, my two great. daughter in law so they can pray for my sons Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, let me supply those. No, to you no. After, well, <laughs> you saved my life. I mean, really, you're, you and, and your your staff really literally saved my life. And, um, what, what the, you got to the bottom of everything that was wrong with me physically and changed everything. And so at least I can give you those books. <laughs> well, you're so... <laughs> I can give you... I can give you the... the, um, the I can't know what they call it, but it's the deluxe edition, but it's all... Uh, like leather bound. Wow, They're that's oh, very nice. Listen, I would love that, but I'm glad to pay for it. But I thank you for your offer anyway, and I would look, we'll work that out after the program. Okay. But, th <laughs> okay. but thank you so much. I'm excited about that. I think that could make a huge difference in our lives. So, Stormy, uh, totally. I know that you've been a guest here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center. You came in originally in 2005 and had some health problems. But before we go to that, mm -hmm. I want the our listening audience to get to know you as a person. So tell us about your life growing up, where you grew up, and how you ended up uh, getting into acting and in, in, in Hollywood and plays and those sort of things, and how you made the trans and then into a singing group, and then how you made the transition into a Christian author, and how all that happened. It's, uh, you've got a wonderful life story, so I'd love you to just share it from the beginning. Where were you? Where'd you okay. grow up? I grew up, um, I was born in Nebraska, um, but I grew up in Wyoming um, because it was just over the border there. And um, my, I was raised by a mentally ill mother, very mentally ill, um, severely. And, and my father was just, he just worked, worked, worked to just eke out a living. Uh, Wyoming can be a hard place to live as a rancher or a farmer because the weather... Um, one year, the weather killed all of our uh, cattle, and then the hails came in the spring and killed all of our crops, and so we lost everything. And, um, and, and earlier in my childhood, my mother uh, kept me locked in a closet when my dad wasn't there, 
And I think that she was very verbally abusive and physically abusive, but I think that being locked in the closet, what just filled me with such fear and um, affected me the most, I think. And so we, but we moved out of, um, of Wyoming when we lost all of those things. I mean, we lost that whole farm and ranch, you know, uh, combination. And it was, we moved to California then. And that's um, where I just, it was so much easier living in a, a place there in California because the weather was so good. And um, and my mother, you know, I wasn't locked in a closet anymore. We didn't have that kind of isolation, you know. We just had a, um, we rented a, an apartment and then rented a house. And, and so there's neighbors all around. So that, that didn't happen once I was old enough, you know. I was like uh, eight by then. And so uh, that didn't happen after that, after we left that isolation of Wyoming. And um, so I... You know, I be, began to enjoy. Well, I always enjoyed school because that kept me out of out of the house, and I felt safe in school, except at recess, but because I couldn't relate to the kids, and they, they, I just wasn't around kids growing up. You know, so I didn't know how to relate to them. I was really terrified of them. Actually, they were loud and kind of, you know, they kind of bullied me because I was like so shy and frightened. You know, so I, my whole experience until I got to California was re- very negative. And once you get to California, the, the kids are more accepting of people from all over because it's kind of a melting pot out there. And um, it started to be more of a normal life, except my mother just kept getting worse and worse. And um, she she just was very just verbally abusive then and physically, too. I mean, she still hit me in the face and things like that. <clears throat> but Were um, you the only child? I was the only child for 12 years, yeah, and so my sister was born when I was 12, and that that gave me some relief because, um, you know, it took a lot of care to take care of a baby, and so um, she would she kind of let up on me, but not not totally at all. It's just um, that I there was something else to divert her attention, you know, right. and um, so fearful and anxious and depressed and almost negative emotions, and um, once I got out of the house, once I went away, um, moved up to um, L.A., I moved up to um, go to school at, at uh, UCLA, and I, I, I put myself through school. I took out a small loan, <clears throat> but I didn't realize I was going to you know, end up in debt, and I, did, I just couldn't afford to do that. So I, I just worked really hard. I worked in evenings and weekends and, and to put myself through that school. And... and um, so I, but I, and I got involved in Hollywood. I started going to auditions, and one led to another. Every time you audition for something, you get it, then that leads to something else and something else. And so I was working a lot up there. So I never finished uh, that last year of college because I was working, doing what I wanted to do, you know. And um, But I still had that depression and anxiety. The anxiety was so gripping. And it was, uh, I was always terrified that someone was going to find out that, you know, that I was a nothing, like my mother always told me. I would never amount to anything and all of that. And um, she, they'd find out how mentally ill my mother was because at that time it, you were kind of suspect yourself if you had a mentally ill parent. parent right. It made you suspect, you know. And so I would try to keep that a, a secret too. And um, But I just it just got so bad. I was working in Hollywood uh, on a bunch of different shows, regular shows, and... and um, but I was so depressed and so anxious, and and it was I was about 28 when um, I received the Lord. One of the singers I was working with on um, one of the shows um, introduced me to the Lord. She took me to meet her pastor, and um, it was a pastor of a big church there in L.A. And I I just they gave me books to read and and I <laughs> began to really see the truth I mean, and I knew it was the truth I just I felt that this was the first thing in my life that made sense and and when I received the Lord my life began to change and uh, I didn't get rid of the anxiety immediately or the depression that took special prayer by special um, Christian counselors there at the church and it was really amazing when that when I was finally free of that it was it was like miraculous to me, it happened just in one counseling session, where I had fasted and prayed for three days before at the request of the counselor, and she prayed for me. I told her about my whole past, and and the only one I had told 
at that time was my husband it was and Michael I married him and uh, I met him at at the church actually and um, married him about a year later but after we were married I just I, he encouraged me to go to this counselor at the church and and, and we fasted and prayed, and I was really set free from that depression and anxiety. It was really miraculous. I could wow. just feel that whole burden lift off my shoulders, my head, and it was. I was amazed. I didn't have any idea that God could or would do do something like that. And so that was where I became a, not only a believer in um, in Jesus and and um, the power of God and working in our lives. Um, but I began to see that um, he, if, he, if, he had, if he would do that for me, what more did he want to do for me, and what more did he want to do for everybody? Mm-hmm. You know, through through the power of prayer, through communication with him, and, and um, doing uh, his will, and trying to leave, live his way. And and um, I mean, these are very freeing things. And 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 so I saw that the freedom that God wants for us is really complete wholeness. And, and so to, I've been trying to help people understand that power in their lives when they pray in Jesus' name. It's a, it's a powerful dynamic. Well, when you, when you hit, which, now, which church did you attend there? Uh, in? It was called Church on the Way. It's, uh, um, well, it's still called that. Um, and uh, Pastor Jack uh, Hayford is the, the mm-hmm. pastor there. And they had tremendous, I mean, you didn't go to that church and not learn how to pray. That was, it was a praying church, and it was a worshiping church, and you learned how to worship God and, and be thankful and, and be humble and, and how to pray and, and know that God hears you and will answer in his way and in his time. That's a real important thing to add there. Right. He's not a, a genie or, you know, he doesn't jump the minute we say something. He he wants us to have a relationship with him where we communicate with him ongoingly in prayer. And it's, a, it's really a powerful thing. Well, so was it the church there that influenced you in your spiritual life in terms of your prayer life? Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, he, he um, Pastor Jack had us pray. You you prayed every, every time you went to church. You 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 went into prayer circles and maybe three or four people and you shared your name and your request and each one prayed for every, for each other you know you prayed for each other and it was really hard at first it's like gosh i don't know if i can sound spiritual you know you think about you have to p- compare yourself to the people on the platform like the pastor or worship leader uh, or whoever and and you don't feel like you're really qualified or you that you know enough but the, it's just sharing your heart with with the Lord, you know, saying God, I just I need help with my finances, or I need I need healing. I, I I've got this this situation in my body that needs your touch. I'm like, and I need to know if I'm you know what doctor to go to, and and what I'm to do to help uh, my health. You know, all of these things, and um, so it was it was really powerful because you you learned that every week, and it just it got easier every week. Uh, and so you were you were at that church then how long and the, and you met your husband Michael with whom you've been married now 45 years? Yes, 45 years. That's right. that's remarkable. Congratulations. My wife Janie Thank and you. I just celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, did you? This, Congratulations. This, this past September. Thank you. So Oh, I, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, I love that. It's great. So yeah. so you and your husband met there and then he he was in the music business or he did some recordings, didn't he? Yes, uh uh-huh. He he was um, when I met him at the church. He was he was not as well known as he became. I just really saw in him the gifting that God had given him, the talent. It's like he's he's scary talented. (laughs) You Mm -hmm. think, wow, where is that coming from? And um, and he acknowledges that it's from the Lord that God gave him those gifts, musical gifts. And so um, after we got married. he was already you know, getting known in in Hollywood, you know, for recording, um, being you know, playing on sessions, playing piano on sessions, recording sessions, and um, and then after we got married, he um, he it just blew wide open where he um, won the um, award for you know the piano player of the year. It was like that, and then and then he began to 
get other awards, you know, a Grammy for, you know, uh, she works hard for the money, that song he wrote with Donna Summer, and just there were other things, too. He did uh, Christopher Cross, where it, that was just, had, I think it was 10 Grammys that, that um, they were up for 10 Grammys, and I think they won eight of them. Wow. Um, Christopher Cross and Michael. So uh, his career was really, really taking off, and um, and it was great because he'd worked he'd worked hard for that. And um, so I, but I when, once we got married, I still had uh, the, I knew the Lord. I you know met the man I married, and I still had that depression. And that's when I he he said, why don't you go to the church office because they have these women up and women their pastors' wives who are really gifted. In knowledge of Scripture and in knowledge of what God wanted to do in our lives, as far as bringing wholeness in, in, into us, and so that it, that's what I I think that was really that encouragement I needed to to go there and do that. You know, I just I I didn't know about things like that. I didn't, I'd been to counselors before, but they were secular counselors, and they just helped me to cope, but not ever got rid of it. And, and so I actually got rid of all that depression and anxiety. When I was prayed for that day, not that I was ever, not ever anxious again or not ever uh, depressed again. It's just that if I was anxious or depressed, I'd take it right to the Lord and I could just get free of it. And so when they prayed those prayers of deliverance for me, I, I you know, and I and I felt that horrible oppression leave, you know, just that burden on my shoulders and my mind and everything. Um, something changed. I mean, everything changed. My my idea of what what God wanted to do in my life and the lives of other people, it was it was miraculous when I saw that. So that that's when I started writing those books. You were mentioning to me now at your at the church that you attended, where you learned from your pastor and his method of teaching. He used there was a lot of prayer, and you met with counselors uh, that prayed for your deliverance from from fears that you had, anxieties that you had, and depressions you had, which really stemmed from your life growing up with your mother, who apparently was mm-hmm. not a not an encouraging mom. She was could oftentimes mm-hmm. be somewhat yes. bitter and discouraging. I wonder yes. why I wonder why that was. Have you ever thought about what 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 maybe had led your mother to be that way? Um, well, I know that um, her relative. I did a whole thing when I when I wrote my autobiography, a uh, whole research uh, trip on her and everything and interviewed my relatives and everything and they said that she um, had signs of that when she was um, like a teenager like 17, 18 and she um, had signs of something being wrong and um, after she had scarlet fever around that time they said that she really it it affected her brain um, where she just she'd get angry and, and her mother died when she was 11 and um, I don't know, she just felt rejected because she was passed around among family members. And um, and she just felt, I don't know, that God had betrayed her or let her down or didn't like her or whatever. Anyway, I'm not sure if that really contributes to the uh, mental illness, but I think it adds something sure. to it. Because everybody said she changed after that. She was not Well, were you ever, after, uh, after you became a Christian... Uh, and uh, began to attend uh, the church in Los Angeles and began to understand the power of prayer. Was your mom still alive? Yes, she was. And she'd gotten so much worse by then. Uh, she just kept getting progressively worse all the time. And um, by the time she died, um, she was, let's see, she was 64. Um, she just was hallucinating. I mean, she thought everyone was out to kill her, and people were watching her through the TV and the mirror and all of these things, and she was isolated. They were isolated on a farm up in Northern California where they retired, uh, my dad retired to, and um, she just kept getting worse and worse. It was it was really bad. And, um, well, it's, it's, what, what's, really re- what's really remarkable is that coming out of that that background, it would have been easy for you to kind of follow in the same steps in the way you were treated. And so you have overcome a lot in your life just from your personal yes. background. And, and obviously God had his hand on you to deliver you from that. And that's, that's, right. that's wonderful. 
And yeah, it is. It's miraculous, really. And so, when did you? When was it that you wrote your first book? And what book did you write? Um, I wrote a book called Greater Health God's Way. It was just um, I had when I was working in Hollywood. I picked up a lot of um, really interesting in- information that worked as far as you know, having uh, health in a natural way. You know, to the natural way to uh, enjoy good health and and. Um, and, and, and so I published that book, or it was published, and then the second book was my autobiography because by that time I had gotten free of all that negative, um, you know, baggage that I had that I carried around and was exhausting me and making me sick. You know? Did you did you come to a point when you were in your counseling that you had to forgive your mother for the way? Yes. Was that the key? Yep. That's a, that's the thing I left out. I forgot to tell you that when I was being counseled by the the pastor's wives, and one in particular, I had to one of the things I had to do while I was fasting for three days, and the counselor fasted with me, which I thought was a great sacrifice. I, you know, she was a stranger to me, and um, I had to forgive my mother. I had to forgive. I had to write down everything that I forgave my mother. Wanted to forgive my mother of you know of, of doing to me and. Um, I I had this huge list of that, all the things that I wanted to forgive her for, and um, I had to proclaim that um, before when they were pro- pastors' wives were praying for me. I had to say, Lord, I I forgive my mother of everything, and just help me to forgive her completely. And, you know, because I I wanted to forgive her completely, but you need the help of God, really, right. the great forgiver who forgives us of everything. He helps us to have a heart to forgive other people and it's so important to our health that we be able to forgive because i i think those um those unforgiveness places in our lives are can really weaken our body and uh, because it just it just gnaws on us and, well it and creates a root of bitterness us. it creates a yes, root, root exactly. of bitterness that eats away mm-hmm. at you yeah, well so right. so uh this goes back to 1975 76 when you wrote these books was that? Or was I started. I wrote, wrote uh, Greater Health God's Way um, after my son was born in 1976, and then my daughter was born in 1981. And by then, I had written my autobiography because I had such miraculous healing in my emotions and and you know, learning to forgive completely, and you know all, all those those kinds of things that you just really need the help of God to to enable you to to do all that. You can make a decision to do it, but it's it's hard to forgive someone who you feel has damaged your life, you know. Or, well, or you, you know what I, I find in our here in our practice, we see approximately seventy five percent of our guests are women, and twenty five percent twenty five percent are men. And when women come in, one of not an uncommon complaint we have, or women complain of health issues relating to anxiety or um, panic attacks. Uh, mm-hmm. maybe depression, mood swings, and all that, which I know can be caused by hormonal imbalances can affect that. But we also know that right. there are real-life experiences that can cause people to feel anxious or depressed, just like the experiences yes. you had. So it's not – and, you know, when, when most women go to a physician, a conventional mm-hmm. doctor, with those symptoms that you were complaining about, had you been seeing a conventional mm-hmm. doctor – you would have been placed on some form of antidepressant or anti-anxiety Absolutely. medication, whatever they had back in those days. That's a long right. time ago. Well, yeah. But they had antidepressants, and they would put you on Valium. I mean, that was a big drug mm-hmm. back then. Uh, yes. And they would have, and, and you probably knew tons of women. I knew, I saw a lot of women in my practice. I didn't, when I first started, it wasn't in natural approaches to health. I had a family medical practice back in the 80s um, on in north side of Houston. And a lot of the women came in requesting Valium. They wanted that was the big drug of choice at those times. You can mm-hmm. probably remember that. So yes, absolutely. But your but your case in point really shows that there can be some deep uh, emotional scars and damages uh, and injuries to our to our mental health and to our spirit. Where we've been, somebody has has influenced our spirit to to feel that way, and and we and we. And we begrudge them. We 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 hate them for what they've done. We're we we're unforgiving. Mm-hmm. And and the point yeah. that you make is what delivered you really was asking 
God to help you forgive your mother for all the harm that she had caused you mentally and yes. physically. Yes, that was an ongoing process, too. It didn't happen, like, immediately. But when, when, when I prayed that prayer, though, and they prayed for me, I uh, mean, when I confessed the unforgiveness and, and asked God to set me free of it completely, that was that was a major turning point, and they prayed for me. I could, could, could feel all that leave, and it's not like I, suddenly I had no unforgiveness. It's just that, every you know, then things would come up that I hadn't thought about that she did, and then I'd have to ask for forgiveness. Lord, help me. For, I confess this before you, Lord. There's unforgiveness. Help me to forgive her for this. And it was an ongoing process. It, now, it just, now, Stormy, do, oh. have you written any book, any one of your books on prayer that addresses this issue of forgiveness? Oh, my, my, uh, it's called Out of Darkness. It was called Stormy back in um, the 80s when I first put out this book as my autobiography. And then um, it was re-released again with uh, about 50% more information because I brought it up to date from 35 years ago, you know, and uh, at that point. And so it's called Out of Darkness now. But th- that was, I dealt with that um, unforgiveness thing. Uh, is really a big issue, and then uh, the book I uh, that I wrote called "The Power of a Praying Woman" was uh, I deal with unforgiveness in that book too because we have to get rid of it in order to, you know, in to order be spiritually to a, healthy. You, you do otherwise, yes. it, it, yeah. otherwise it says you get a root of bitterness. Uh, and, yeah, and Hebrews horrible, it talks it, about that. That just eats at your body too. Sure, only, only your mind, but is your well. This is what body. this is what's really important. So. When you had all that, were you? Did you feel when you had the bitterness and the unforgiving mm-hmm. spirit towards your mother before you had asked her forgiveness? Did you? Mm-hmm. Was that affecting you besides the anxiety attacks and depression? Physically, yes. had, was it affecting oh. your health? Yes, I, 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 I was always, I was always sickly as a child, and I think it's just from neglect. Really, I had, I had diphtheria when I was a child, and almost uh, died of that. And, um, I, you know. It, my mother was thought doctors were out to kill her because you know they said she thought that doctors had killed her her own mother you know her mother died in childbirth and it was a, uh, was the doctor's fault um, and and um, and he felt badly about so badly about it that he paid for all the funeral expenses and everything and and uh, so so from then on she didn't trust doctors and she thought they were out to kill her eventually she thought that and so. Um, so I'm sure that's one of the reasons. I don't know for sure. Uh, that's why I didn't go to a doctor, you know, until I was like dying or something. And um, and, I, and I didn't thank God because of a, this great doctor who found out what was wrong and and traveled out in a blizzard to our house and walked across a field when his car couldn't go any further and gave me a shot of whatever it was. And that that was the turning point, you know. And I just but she never trusted them, and so I always thought they were out to kill her, you know. And I think um, the fact that she was very neglectful of me, that, that that's why I was very sickly, plus nearly dying from that, is it, it really damages a lot in your body. And um, so it, I was sickly from as far back as I can remember. Uh, uh, and so that and that carried over as a teenager and in my young adult life. I was always sick always sick in, with something, and it wasn't until I got involved um, with the, the singers in Hollywood that they, I learned so much about natural natural healing, you know, eating eating the right food, you know, exercising, all of that, and that that was really helpful, but I still, I think, I really believe all of that negativity in me, that unforgiveness, that depression, that anxiety, it took its toll on my body. Sure and, it does. And I needed, I needed help. Sure it does, and I often wonder, I, I mean, I think about this in relation to our guests. You know, when our guests come in and we evaluate them from a physical point of view, I, I, we look at eating patterns, we look at thyroid hormones, female or male hormones, adrenal hormones, vitamins and minerals, exercise program, allergies, mm-hmm. as having uh, when they're out of balance and when they're not you're not taking the correct amount or you're eating improperly or not exercising or you got allergies, you tend to be sick. But we have some guests that do remarkable. You know, you get them up on a program and they just do remarkable. Then we have other guests that no matter what you do, they just don't seem to want to get well. They just don't. And maybe, 
And I just wonder if there's not some unresolved conflicts from their past life that's having an effect on the way they're feeling. And, they're, and they're, oh, you know, and, and so we don't do primarily do counseling here, although we're mm-hmm. a Christian based organization. But just your story tells me we ought to be thinking more. Uh, we think we think about the whole person, mind, body, and spirit, but we maybe need to have more emphasis on the spiritual aspect of that and work with somebody, uh, some kind of Christian counseling. That mm-hmm. could help yeah, do I, that. Well, listen, yeah, we've, we've been visiting with Stormy O'Mardian, and we've talked about her early life growing up, uh, living in Wyoming, really having a mother who was very negative on her and uh, adversely affected her health, her mental health, her physical health. They moved mm-hmm. to Los Angeles area there. She went to UCLA and then got involved in a church, uh, attended a church other. What was the name of the church again? They called the Church on the Way. The Church on the Way, and the pastor was Pastor Jack Hayford. Hayford, and mm-hmm. so there she learned the power of prayer and was delivered yes. from some of her emotional uh, the scarring that had occurred in her life, and married her husband of forty five years now, Michael, who was a very successful musician. On our next broadcast, we're going to talk about Stormy's move and her husband's move out to the Nashville area. So we thank you for joining us now. And and then on our next broadcast, be sure to pick up the second half of this. Uh, and, and we'll talk about the health problems that Stormy began to experience as she passed through the change of life and uh, mm-hmm. how we became uh, a factor in helping her get her health back. Oh, a big factor. <laughs> That's right, and if you would like to receive a complimentary consultation and get your life back as well, you can always call us at 281-698-8698. That's 281-698-8698. Thank you for joining us today at Dr. Hotsey's Wellness Revolution. A special thanks to Physicians Preference Pharmacy, formerly Hotsey Pharmacy, proud sponsor of Dr. Hotsey's Wellness Revolution podcast. Information provided on this radio program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution radio program advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this radio program is at the listener's discretion.